all know the stock market is crazy. The market is different last year than it is right now. And I firmly believe that we need to have a whole bunch of tools in our toolbox, so to speak, so that we can take advantage of where the market is right now so that we can make the most profits off of our assumptions. Today we're talking about the broken wing butterfly and the butterfly, which are very flexible trades and have some clear advantages in this high IV environment. Hey everyone, my name is Levi Woods, this is Drawbridge Finance, and as always, this is an opinion channel only about money. I don't offer financial advice in any way, shape, or form. Now today, I wanna to talk about a strategy that I have been using quite frequently over the last couple of weeks. Uh, specifically the broken wing butterfly. I don't typically trade the a butterfly, but I am going to show you both of those trades today because I think there's a, a significant potential for either of them. Now, one of the reasons I bring this up is because of my 100K challenge. Right now, I'm doing a challenge with my patrons where I'm challenging myself to take a $1,000 investment and compound it by trying to make at least 11% every single week so that I can grow it to $100,000 by the end of the year. For those of you who are unaware, 11% is actually really difficult to try to achieve. And there's certain strategies that we can use. The butterfly is one of them. So when I wanna make a very large amount of money for a small amount of risk, that is a potential time when I would use a butterfly. The great things about them are that they have a huge potential profit. I mean, we rarely get to that maximum profit, but there is huge potential. They also are limited risk strategy. So I know at the outset of the trade that there's no way that I can lose over a certain amount of money. And those are the two reasons why I might choose to trade it. Now, specifically, I enter butterflies in a high IV environment. They are a credit spread, so to speak. So the amount of credit that we receive on the outside of the trade is important. Therefore, the volatility has to be high so that that credit is greater. So generally speaking, they're entered in a high IV environment. And it's when a trader has a very specific assumption about a movement of a stock. If I think a stock is trading at a specific price and it's going to move to another specific price or stay at the price that it's currently at, these are both opportunities where I would play a butterfly spread. Let's take a look at Yahoo Finance for a second and we'll look at this volatility, 27.75%, which means the expected move over the next 12 months is plus or minus 27% of the current valuation of the entire market. That is, by definition, high IV. So we know that right now, the environment is prime for these types of trades. Now let's take a look at my trades from last week. So my uh, specifically the 100K challenge, I'm trying to uh, invest a small amount of money and compound it over time. Now this week's investments, if I look at the summary, I was had a max potential loss of $1,318 and I would manage to get $228 profit, which is a 17.3% return. Now doing this week over week, we can generate a lot of money, but it doesn't come without its risks. Now, if we look specifically at the trades that I put on, I, I placed seven trades in total last week and I placed an iron condor on EA. I placed a iron condor on the queues and the other five trades were all butterflies, which is the reason why I'm making this video today. If we look at the results specifically, you can see I had one that was a scratch. Uh, this was an iron condor, a nice 17% return. Uh, IWM, 25%. Pfizer was 100% loss. Even though it was 110%, my total loss was only actually $12. And this is where this strategy is interesting because you can actually place trades where it's a very, very small risk with very, very high reward. This Q's butterfly returned a whopping 40% return in a single week, which is amazing. My iron condor, 15% return, and then another scratch being down $3. So from the butterflies that I played, we had two that were scratches and three that were great winners. And this is why I'm trading these in today's market environment. Now, there are some cons to these. Now, the, if you're trading in a platform that has brokerage fees, because there's so many legs and because we open and close them, it, they can be expensive to trade. If you're trading on a platform like Robinhood, it's very, very cheap. There's no fees, so it's great. 
But if you're looking for low fees and you're trading in Canada, you're thinking about uh, playing with butterflies, then absolutely you need a brokerage like Interactive Brokers. I have a link down below and I, it's the platform that I use because it's the cheapest in Canada. Now, one of the things I don't love about butterflies is that they have a very small profit window. Although they can potentially make a huge amount of money and that risk to reward ratio can be very dramatic, the likelihood is that we're not gonna be getting max reward all the time, and that profit window is often very narrow. Now you can do wider butterflies, but typically they're traded fairly narrow, so it's a small window of opportunity. Have you ever wondered why a butterfly is called a butterfly? Oftentimes the profit chart is reminiscent of some sort of imagery. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but I actually have my bachelor's degree in fine arts with a double major in video production and drawing. And now I'm gonna show you a, a drawing and I'm sorry that my drawing so skills are so severely lacking, but I think it might shed some light on why we would have a butterfly versus a broken wing butterfly. Now here's a little image of a butterfly, and you can see if we highlight the bottom portion of the image exactly why this is called a butterfly. Now imagine, if the butterfly's wing was kind of broken and we redrew the chart or re-examined the bottom of that image, we can see the profit profile of a broken wing butterfly. Pretty fun, right? Now, I often get asked, why do we use this terminology at all? Well, if we're talking about a butterfly in general, the reason is, is because it's a shorthand for something else. It's a lot of words to say what it actually is, but if you want, I can explain it. Starting from the bottom, the lowest strike, I am purchasing one long out of the money put. The next strike up, I am selling two out of the money puts. Then another higher strike yet, I am buying a single out of the money put. That's it. Or a put butterfly. Now let's take a look at how we set it up in the platform. You can see that this trade was entered on February 14th, and what I did was a four day to expiration trade. I'm going to sell two strikes at the 340 put, which are going to create the peak of the butterfly. Then I'm going to buy a 342 long put, which defines the maximum profit on the upside. Now you'll notice that these two pieces are exactly the same trade as the put ratio spread that I went over last week. If you didn't check out that video, I'll put the link right up here, you can check it out. Now this one's a little bit different because I'm buying another put. The lower put, the 336, is what defines the maximum loss and means that I can only lose about 160 bucks on this trade. Because no matter what happens, I will own a long put and it will be able to, I will be able to sell that for a profit. The result of it is that I get a profit chart that looks like the bottom of a broken wing butterfly that I drew earlier. Pretty slick, right? It's got a high probability, 67%, and the stock is trading at 345, and as long as the stock stays above 337.50, I will make money on this trade. Now, when I'm looking at this trade, my assumption was that the stock was going to trade sideways, trade up a little, trade up a lot, and I wanted to be able to make money. But if it was gonna go down, I didn't think it was gonna go down super far, and I thought maybe over the next four days, it might drift down to this 340 mark. The risk is that the stock could go down even further, and if it goes below this long put at 336, I'll be into the max loss zone, but it is limited. Now, one of the things that's really not very nice about a butterfly in general is that there's very little defense. Almost all limited loss strategies are very difficult to defend. So although they have a potential reward, if they go against us, we have to be okay with taking that max loss. And that's just kind of how they are. This is the NASDAQ and it has been incredibly volatile. This is what it did just on Friday. If we look at the one day chart, this was the very last day of the trade. You can see from open, it opened at 344, and at one point it was down um, way under 340. So it was all over the place, even on the very last day. And butterflies have to be held to the very end of the trade in order to get close to that max profit. I actually exited the trade when it was right around here. Uh, there was about an hour left in the day. And had I held a little bit longer, I probably would have made even more money on this trade. But with only an hour and a bit left, I had held it long enough and I was happy to take my profits. I wanna quickly show you how I set this up in my own record keeper because it's important. Some of these butterflies don't show quite perfectly when we're setting them up in interactive brokers or other software. So it's important to, to record them in a way where I know what my profit is actually gonna be. But all I have to do is go down to the bottom where it says 
a zero trade rolling blank. I'm gonna right click on that. I'm gonna say duplicate. Then I'm going to simply enter the information that I see in the strategy builder down below. So I just start at the top. The first thing I do is I change the name. I'm gonna call this QQQ video demo. You can really put whatever you want up here as long as the first letters are the ticker. It, you can see that it automatically pulls the current price, 341, which was the close price on Friday. This transaction was entered on uh, February 14th. And on that particular date, the queues were trading at a price of 345.02. I'm gonna enter that in here. And now the volatility rank is optional. If you wanna record it, you can. It has no bearing on the spreadsheet. Now I don't own any shares in this case and I'm choosing to do a put butterfly. So I'm gonna scroll down here, choose put butterfly from the list. Then the, op the option expiration date, I'm gonna put in February 18th. It automatically knows that since I've chosen to put butterfly, which cells I need to fill out. So I can put the information in here. So 336 was my low uh, long put strike. 342 was my high. My short puts were both at 340. So I just enter those. And the total trade is entered for a credit of 45 cents in this case is how much I received. Now I did one contract. In this case, I actually did two contracts. So I put in two. Now the margin requirement or cash allocated for the trade, we can actually look at what our brokerage gives us. In this case, it was actually charging me zero margin because I have so many hedges on queue that I don't have any margin requirement on queues. Uh, then I could make or lose money on this and it wouldn't make any difference to my account. So in this case, what I do is I enter what I actually am put, could potentially lose. And I, all I have to do is scroll down to the chart. And if I've entered everything correctly, uh, you can see here that the, the max loss on this trade is going to be around $310. So that's what I would choose to enter here, which is $310. And then I would choose US dollars. And it can automatically see the, the massive potential return. It's 29% return on margin because the potential is I can make $45 times two, which is $90 on a total max risk of 310 bucks. Now this is where I was saying the, pro, the, the risk to reward ratio is not really that great. I actually could lose all of the money. If the stock just dropped down below 336, I lose the whole 310. So the, the risk to reward ratio, even though it's 29%, it's still a little bit on the low side, to be honest, uh, because it could easily move down there. But there's also the potential that it could make even more. This trade theoretically could make up to $500. I'm risking 300 to potentially make 500, which is a much better return. You can actually see what happened. In this case, this indicates the the stock where it was when I entered and the stock actually moved down right into my profit hump. Now I didn't make this the maximum return. Um, I actually closed this trade when I closed it for a credit of 20 cents and I closed it on February 18th. And you can see that the chart automatically tells me I made a 38.58% return, $119. I had a realized profit after fees of $119.60 on a max risk of $310. Now this is a 38% return. A simple annual return, if I was to do this every week, is 3,500, which is very, very high. And you can see this ridiculous compounding return, which is obviously super unrealistic because there's gonna be weeks where we win, there's gonna be weeks where we lose. Now, one of the beautiful things I love about my chart is that it actually shows the stock moving as we go. I can open up the sheet at any time and it is pulling the real-time data when the stock is open and it actually moves this line so we can see if we've moved into the max loss zone or not. And it's one of the reasons why I personally use this and why I built this spreadsheet so that I can actually track my own trades in this manner. Now, I also wanted to show you a, a regular butterfly. And what makes it a regular butterfly or not a broken wing is that the, the potential loss is the same on both sides. Now, the beautiful thing about butterflies is that I can build these profit tents wherever I like, and I can build them in different sizes and shapes. I can make them wider and increase or decrease the risk. I can also build them with all calls if I want, or all puts, or a combination of puts and calls. Like in this case, the stock was trading at $49. I could have created a butterfly that had a profit and right at that, I could have sold the 49.50s, would have been the center of the butterfly, and that would have been a much better play in this case. But my assumption, and this is where they're quite flexible, was that the stock was going to move down into this range over those next four days, because I was thinking that it was gonna continue the trend. Now, in this case, I was wrong. The stock didn't, it only moved down 
down part of the way. And for that reason, on the last day, I actually closed this for basically the cost of the max loss. I exited the trade, so I had no risk through expiration. And that's why I took that 100% loss because it was a very low cost to enter because it was out of the money when because this peak was actually out of the money i actually only cost me eleven dollars to open you can see down here it literally cost me a debit of 11 bucks and i could have potential potentially made 90 which is like a nine times return but the stock had to move into that zone which it didn't so there's a couple different ways you can play and this is a trade that is pretty high risk, but at the same time, the max loss is very little. So like gambling, it's like I risked 11 bucks. And in this case, I lost because the stock didn't move enough. Now, if you're interested in supporting the channel, you can go to my website, drawbridgefinance.ca. You can purchase a spreadsheet. Or if you're interested in becoming a patron, this is one of the perks of becoming an options tiers mem tier member is that you get to download this uh, chart. And it's something that I use on my daily trading basis. Anyways, I hope this video has been informative. If you guys loved it, remember to leave a comment down below. It doesn't have to be a huge comment. Just say thank you or give me a shout out or tell me what kind of stock you're looking at this week. And for all my patrons, thank you very much. I appreciate you and I will see you on Tuesday when we're going to be putting some more trades for next week's challenge. Thanks so much. Let's get rich together.